Well, hello again. It's Saturday night, the 28th day of March, day 88 of my journey to alignment. In just two days, I'll hit my three-month mark of keeping this video journal. Man, can you believe it? I can't. My power statement for today said I would build out the full lesson six. Normally, it takes me about one and a half to two full days to build out an entire lesson. And so I went out on a limb and declared that I was going to get it done in one day, all eight segments. So take a look at this. So there you go. That was the last segment, second uh, segment eight of lesson six. All built out. All the other seven before it were all done. And I've even recorded it and posted it up on my Google Drive. So it's all ready to go. I've got lesson seven next, but lesson six is done. Bam. That said, here's my to-do list that I had for Saturday. As you can see, I had a couple uh, yellow ones there. Build out lesson six. Check. Write letters to some folks at Avalon. Check. And there's a few other things that I had to do today, but lesson six is done. And I love doing that. Okay. Let's go ahead and answer Croy's segment here. He says, get honest with yourself. What didn't go well today, Marty? Or what could you have done better today? Did you wake up early and start strong? Check. Did you start your morning strong like I did? Yes. Did you charge more with power? Next, were you productive throughout your day? Lesson six done in one day. Did you get the most important things done? Did you move your goals forward? Check, check. Did you show up as the person you wanted to be in with your personal time with Kathleen? In other words, were you present? We did. We had a lovely, lovely day. Now combine all these questions together and ask yourself this question. Were you honest with yourself about today's task, Marty? In other words, did you keep your commitment you made to yourself today? Well, like I committed to, it took me the entire day, though, but I finished building out Lesson 6 completely and saved it and put it up on the Google Drive. I kept that commitment, and it's because of all the time-saving tricks I've learned over the last five and a half lessons. They're really cutting down on the time it takes to record, you know, write and record and build out a lesson now. And that's exciting to me because I'm getting closer and closer to having finished uh, a full package of coaching. It's going to be done soon. I'm halfway done now. The next uh, thing that Croy asks is, what was the one thing uh, that you did out of all the things you did today, Marty, that you know you can improve on going forward? In other words, did you have or did you experience any failures today or a failure? And if so, what was it? Was it something you can turn into a tool of success going forward? Well, the one thing that, uh, one task that I can improve on going forward is putting together a realistic, fully prioritized to-do list and back burner list so that I don't keep pulling away from off the list of the day trying to get some things and I can't and I put it onto the next list and I don't get them done put it onto the next list and most of them are, are lesser important things and I really don't have to get done that day so I could clean up my list in that regard by putting them over on my to-do list again and just focus on the most important things I got to get down and a few of the other lesser important things and have a nice full day and not feel like I've left things on that darn list. They can be over here at the um, the I don't know, the back burner type list. So there's the failure for today, and I just realized that I can improve upon it by uh, doing a better uh, list building prioritization and having that skill, and I'm calling it to be or not to be success tool. In other words, that's to do the back burner or not do the back burner. In other words, put it on there or not. The question is, what was my biggest success today? 
I'm pretty sure my biggest success today was being able to use all of the video producing skills and tricks that I've learned over the last three months and applying them to producing lesson six so that I can cut time of production in half now and use that save time to do so much more. That's a big accomplishment. So bam, done. The next question is, what movies did you watch in your mind today, Marty? Did you make time for them? I watched my four favorite movies, of course, and that lets me imagine myself living the dream every day as though I'm already doing it, as though I already own it. And the fact is, is I do own it. It's mine. If God gave me those visions, I can go get after it, and they can be mine. So going to the movies reminds me that uh, if I can think it, I can own it. Next is, what's the one thing you did that made you feel successful today, Marty? Well, feeling successful can come from a variety of accomplishments, as I've discussed in my video entries so far. But to ju um, be on this journey to alignment and experiencing bringing so many pieces through the portal of my mind into the world of the physical, it reminds me and it tells me that uh, it's such an incredible neuropath um, mapping that's taking place. I feel this every day. I'm living the dream. I can imagine um, going back and and looking at what I've done and see that I've created that habit, that right way of thinking. And all those thoughts have helped me to discover that I can achieve it. It's such a great feeling. Bam! Next, Corey asks you to rate your day. I gave my day another rare 10. I say a 10 because I have been able to get a video lesson completed and built out and completely uploaded in just one day is fabulous. So that's a 10 for sure. The next question is, if this was the only thing you get done tomorrow, but you'd still feel like a success, what would that one thing be, Marty? Put it into a power statement for tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is Sunday, and I think I want to do uh, not only sharpen the saw like I do on Sundays, I want to start reviewing all that has happened and all that I've been able to accomplish and get done during the month of March. You know, like I did the last two months, at the end of March, I'm going to be doing accounting for the month, uh, and that's going to be Tuesday night, and I want to have that uh, all thought out and ready to go, and so I'm going to spend a little time today on preparing that. So my power statement for tomorrow says, I'll start preparing my overview report on March's accomplishments, and I'll um, be sharing at the end of the month, which is Tuesday night. Whew. Sharpening the saw and starting that review will be a perfect day for me tomorrow, so it's great. Now, let's end the day strong. What am I grateful for, for for today? First of all, I'm grateful for USB flash drives. The little things right here. I'm just so excited about those. And I say that because I get to use one of these to save all my podcasts and all 12 lessons once they're all finished and put it on there. And I can give them out to about five or six or 10 folks as a focus group before I go out through all that expense and build out that website. They can help me tweak and give me some ideas to clean it up so it's all ready to go on then I'll put it on the website so that's going to be a great little tool to put those all in hand them out let them go online watch them at their leisure and do it and then report back by a certain time fill out the forms that I did which I talked a lot about in lesson six anyhow next I'm grateful for the law of action Oscar Wilde once said success is a science if you have the conditions you get the result you might ask, what are the laws of success? Well, of course, that depends on you and me. More specifically, it depends on how each of us think, how we think. Success is an ambiguous word, of course, and it's ambiguous for a reason. It means different things to different people. For some, success is wealth. For others, money or wealth is nothing else than a tool. Consider Alfred Noble, for example. Alfred was a Swedish chemist engineer, inventor, businessman, and philanthropist. He held 355 patents, and he accumulated vast sums of wealth. When he died in 1896, most people, including his family, were shocked upon learning that he willed the majority of his fortune into a trust, and from that trust, the Nobel Prizes were born. Mr. Noble wrote, contentment is the only real wealth. Hmm. Now consider what Winston Churchill espoused. Success is not the absence of wealth, nor the experience of failure. Winston Churchill, a British statesman and prime minister of the United Kingdom during World War II, went on to say, and I quote, success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. Man, do I love that quote. Let me say it again. Success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. That's so true. Now consider Thomas Edison's quote. Edison, who was once told that he was too stupid to learn anything and become perhaps the most prolific inventor of history, said, and I quote, I have failed, 
I've just found, excuse me, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And he discovered the light bulb because of that. Whether Noble Church Hill or Edison followed any set of laws or secrets of success is unknown, but that doesn't mean that they didn't embody a greater purpose that enabled outstanding success. Cause and effect govern the laws of the universe. The supreme law of the universe is the law of predication, like I've talked about before, and that is supported by the law of and principle of faith, which is in fact the law of action, which is what I'm grateful for. We as creations of the universe, whether you believe in God or a higher being or something else, we are all subject to his, their, or its laws. Are we not? To quote a famous atheist, Carl Sagan, considered by many to be the greatest uh, let me see, astrophysicist who ever lived, the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of stardust, end quote. <laughs> With that as the foundation, let me tell you about the law of action and why I'm so grateful for it. One common and grave mis. Uh, perception of the law of action is that thoughts are all we need. I hate to break it to you, but this is simply not true. Jim Carrey, the uber famous comedic, excuse me, comedic act actor, once said to Oprah Winfrey, I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered and gave myself three, maybe five years before I could get it. And so on Thanksgiving of 1995, I found out I was going to make $10 million for Dumb and Dumber check cast. Wow. The fact is you can't just visualize and go eat a sandwich. Nothing is possible without action. A body in motion will stay in motion while a body at rest will remain at rest. Action or what I call the principle of the law of faith or faith in action is the moving cause of all action. And lastly, I'm grateful for all the choices I have. I can't imagine living somewhere where I didn't have the choice of what I would do for a living or choose to worship and worship not, or how to um, live where I wanted to live or how I wanted to live. I could go on and on and rattling off example after example of the choices I have, and I haven't even given those that additionally money or wealth would be afforded to me. I can go on about that. Wealth is not evil. It is just... Um, something that gives a person more moral choices than he or she would otherwise have if they were poor. And so, as you can see, for the last few video journal entries, I have been giving three things that I'm grateful for. One being some kind of um, helpful little tool or something that really gives a big benefit that's really small. The next one being a law that I'm very grateful for. And the last being some kind of blessing. Anyway, I'm going to choose this uh, night to simply say I love those things. I'm very blessed to have that and so much more. But I'm going to end the night tonight and I'll be back here tomorrow night for sure. Meaning right here at this same place, at this same station, so to speak, telling my story of living the dream. And so until then, I wish you continued success. Good night.